Hi, you're watching Avenue X, where junkie and good storytelling shares her thoughts, knowledge, and occasional weird ideas on stories and how they're told. 雪中悍刀行 Snow Sword Stride is a 38-episode drama that's being aired on the platform Tencent as well as CCTV. The drama is based on a web novel written by the author Feng Huo Xi Zhuhou, coming from the very well-known Chinese web novel site Zongheng. The original novel is over four million Chinese characters. Long as one of the most popular web novels of its genre of that website of this author, and around those couple of years in Chinese web novel land, and it is adapted by the very well-known scriptwriter called Wang Juan, who has previously done quite a few very successful script, including Da Song Shao Nian Zhi, Young Blood, and Qing Yu Nian, Joy of Life. This has been a highly anticipated project since day one. They started shooting at the beginning of July last year and wrapped at the end of November. Zhang Ruoyun is the lead of the drama, female lead Li Gengxi. Then the other major roles would include the father role played by Hu Jun, a very important general role played by Gao Weiguang, and a Xia Ke, who is a master of Dao or saber, played by Zhang Tianai. At this point, making this video, I've watched the first twelve episodes. Right now, I'll give it a high one go to mine. We still have two thirds of the drama to go, so that could totally change. And I do see a trend of slightly climbing up slowly, as usual. I'll talk first about the drama itself, and then the good and bad. But before, I want to mention this set of books that has been here <laughs> since the beginning of this video. If you've watched one of my previous stream, you've already seen me showing you the books. This is a set of comic books of the entirety of the Jin Yong novel Shen Diao Xia Lu, Return of the Condor Heroes. It is done by the artist Huang Zhanming back in 1990s. The publisher Asia Pack. Now, almost 30 years later, decided they're gonna do this reprint and box set, the limited edition, and it's done in two languages. This is the English version that is in this blue box set. Then you have an orange box set that is in Chinese. It also will give you the option for e-books at half price of the printed version. And each box comes with a card that will give you a number of this particular set. And there's only 1,000 print of English and of. Chinese. So once they're gone, they're gone. I'll leave the links to purchase the books in print version and in ebook version in the description box below. They are based in Singapore, so they will need to ship it to wherever you are. They reached out to me in May, and then they shipped a set of English books to me in June, and it didn't get to me until. Late September, it took it three months on the ocean. In a way, I can call this video sponsored by them, but what I get is really just this book. I was just looking for an opportunity to bring up this set of books in my videos, and there hasn't been a wuxia drama, okay, for a long time this year. So I'm happy the Snow Sword Strike showed up and let me jam in at the end of the year for this set of beautiful books. But in another way, Snow Sword Strike is really not a wuxia drama. So what can I say? Best I can do. Now let's get back to Snow Sword Stride. What this story is about. I haven't read the ginormous original novel. It scares me off with its length. But I did do my best to research on what this story is about. The story is focused on a Xu family. More specifically, it's. Heir Xu Fengnian, played by Zhang Ruoyun, he is the son of one of the most powerful general in this drama's world setting of this particular country and its dynasty. His father is titled Wang. If there is an emperor, which this story does have, then Wang is one step down. But if you think of the emperor as the king, then the Wang would be like a duke. He got this title literally because he is a mass killer who has fought many battles and wars during his life. Time to eventually help the imperial power to establish their reign, but he is so powerful that the imperial family is always worrying about him overtaking that. So there's this political tension that's very tense from the beginning of the story, and the story is about the journey of this young man who doesn't really want to become the next. King Wang of that region and having that much military power, who actually wants to live for himself, but then he would have no choice in this kind of setup to have to take up that responsibility and go through a painful journey and shoulder the kind of responsibility that he was born into. That's what the story 
is about. Now, let's talk about what is good and what is not so good about Snow Sword Stride. First good thing, most of the actors use their own voice. At least the ones who have very good line deliveries. There are still a couple of people who did get dubbed. But the dubbing is rather well integrated, so it wouldn't jump out as too weird. And the people that I really want to listen to their real voice talking do have their real voice, so I'm really happy. The second thing, for the first 12 episodes, I think the pacing has worked out pretty okay, and it's actually improving as the story develops. The first two episodes may require a little bit patience for you to get into it or stick through it. If you came in with zero knowledge of the character setup and the story, you may get a little bit confused and not quite sure what you're looking at, but once you cross over the first two, three episodes, it starts to make more sense and become much more interesting. The third thing that I appreciate about this drama is there are parts of its style that is not really well received, and I see why. And I agree with most of the uh, criticisms on that, but I'm going to leave it to the negative parts to talk about. But I do like some of the things it does. If you've watched Joy of Life, this drama actually has a very different vibe. If you watch a lot of Xu Ke's wuxia films, you will get reminded of that kind of style of pacing, of editing, of what kind of framing we use for a particular scene, and then how people take turns to speak their lines, and even the style of their language. That does have a sense of poetry. I'm not sure 100% if I'm gonna like it fully at the end of it, but right now I enjoy parts of its philosophical way of talking. It definitely has some kind of design in it, although I don't feel it's super matured. So I will still put it in the positive end, because I like to see dramas that have their own flares and designs and not always trying to be just yet another fully expected drama of its genre. Then the fourth and most important thing, the thing that kept me watching this drama is I really 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 do enjoy the main lead's acting. Here I'm being specific about Zhang Ruoyun and Hu Jun playing Xu Fengnian, the son, and Xu Xiao, the father. The drama really started to get interesting when they meet. I have to say, these two play off each other's energy so well. And they portray this father and son relationship that's very unique. It's in the original novel, it's also in this drama. Not the archetypical Asian ancient parents and children's type of relationship. It's super specific and funny, and they both as actors played their roles so well. And you keep wondering why they're like that. And it's one of the hooks that keeps you hooked on this story if you haven't read the original novel, which is me. These are the positive things. Then on the negative side, first thing I've already said that <laughs> in my weekly video is I hate the color grading. I think a lot of people don't like it either. It looks like cement mixed with Chinese green pickled garlic. And the director has said something on the internet because the story is set in Jiangnan, the uh, sort of southern part of China type of thing. We want to make it look green and like full of like plants, vitality. I'm like, you don't have to make people green to make it look like it's in the south. Everything is green in this drama, like the skin tone, the white of the clothes gets green. Everything is so green, but it's just me, okay? If you like it, it's totally fine. They did use very good camera. I can tell it's a different type of camera than, say, Joy of Life. And the director did say they picked the type of camera that will make it look closer to film than video. And I can tell that. I really like it, but I don't like the color grading. Second, everybody has ranted about that, and I would agree with all of those rentings on China's internet. From day one, this drama came out, which is Da Xi. The choreograph and the camera language of all the fighting is so bad. This is why I said it's not really a wuxia drama, although it has promoted itself to look like that. I understand it has costed a lot of actors for their whatever suitability for their roles other than that they're good at fighting. And I understand you can't train somebody in like two days about how to be a good martial art fighter. But still, they film it with a style of just getting it so slow-mo. Super high frame rate and slow it down. Even if you speed it up three times, it still looks slow. Think of those older wuxia dramas where the actors are actually doing most of the stunt thing themselves. At least turning swords in their hand for real, and it's hard to practice that, but they bother to do that. Or even like in early 2000s, when Liu Yifei would actually bother to fight herself doing splits in air. 
herself. I mean, she's trained as a dancer, not really as a martial art fighter, but even her fighting looks like faster and more energetic and this muscle power and speed. And now, like 2021, we get this, everything is slow-mo. And you know the actor or actresses, they, they're just like so not trained that if you look at them in real time speed, you're gonna cringe so much. They can't even stand steadily. Like their legs are so untrained that they wobble. And they try to avoid fighting scenes as much as possible. So a lot of fights, in this drama happen off screen. You hear the noise and then you don't even see it on screen and it's done. Or it's being told by people in letters. You read about what happens. They literally talk about fighting scenes instead of showing you that. Day one it came out, everybody was like, what the heck am I looking at? I mean, if you want to look at a better da xi this year, ultimate note at the beginning of the year is a much better one. Okay, we're not saying any classic old or good ones, just that one is much, much better. If they can bother to make the fighting scenes of a ancient time setting with a lot of wuxia element in its story as good as ultimate note, I wouldn't complain. It's worse than word of honor, just, just so you know. <laughs> Slow-mo, hey? Talk about poetic fighting. The third point is related to that, which is the same problem that Mi Wu Chang's first drama this year had. Promoting it in the way that actually doesn't fit what is the real product. Since day one of they started promoting this drama, which is back in last year, everything they've released small trailers, posters, even the language, like the copy that they write on whatever uh, official channels they have for this drama's promotion. It's hinting at this is a wuxia, very wuxia <laughs> drama. Yet when the drama airs, you immediately see it's actually not a wuxia. It is much more about quanmo, about politics, conspiracies, power struggles, taking out a lot of the comedy and the overall more bubbly energy of Qing Yunian, you'll get Snow Sword Stride. And a lot of its fighting scenes has the element of fantasy in it. They have literally magic that can fly swords in the air fighting other people. They just stand there and just mental it. I don't know. So, <laughs> I mean, uh, it's not a problem that you have that in this type of stories, but then don't promote it in the wrong way. Don't give people false expectations of what you have and end up delivering them with something that is totally not what they expect. Unfortunately, Snow Sword Stride did the same thing as the pavilion did and therefore mismanage people's expectations. Then the final thing, I don't think it's super problematic to me. But I do notice it is to a lot of people complaining about things about this drama, which is the casting choice of the female lead played by Li Gengxi. I haven't read the book, but I did get told by people who have read the book about what type of character she is. And I would say appearance wise, she may be a bit far away from what the book description of this character is. Since I don't know about that, I uh, don't have to worry about that. I just look at the drama as drama itself. I would say I don't have a huge problem with her acting. Sometimes I really enjoy her rather interesting interactions with the male lead and their very, very weird relationship. <laughs> okay. The logic behind it is something that I don't quite understand. But I think the biggest problem of her acting is she acts way too much like a contemporary person. I know this is fictional land but it's based on some kind of reality of traditional Chinese history, politics, powers, even dynasties. When you think about what kind of dynasties it's kind of referring, I'm dressed in that period today. Pretty much within Nanbei, that type of thing where countries divided between North and South and different powers. Anyway, people have a level of expectation when they talk about something <laughs> that is based on Chinese traditional wuxia or dynasty or politics or history. There's the expected behavior, conduct, language, body language, all those detailed things that distinguish a period drama setting character with a contemporary <laughs> character. I like Li Gengxi very much. She did a couple of very good contemporary dramas with very successful acting of her roles. But I think for this drama, she still kept pretty much the exact mannerism. The way she speaks, the way she moves her muscles and just the entire vibe of this person is literally a contemporary person dressed in a period clothing. And it's different 
from the people around her. That's a big problem because you don't quite fit in. It's like only you are out of its time and everybody is acting with audience's expectation of what a period setting drama's character should look like. So that part does feel rather jarring. I can deal with it. It doesn't bother me too much. But if it bothers a lot of people and make them to the point where they don't want to continue watching this drama, because every time they look at her, they feel they're out of the narrative, I would understand. So these are the things, good and bad, of Snow Sword Stride based on the first 12 episodes. I will definitely continue watching this drama. I hope it gets better as the story becomes more intense and interesting. And sadly, as I'm enjoying the acting part of it, I have to bear the pain of visual assault. Thank you for watching Avenue X. Don't forget to check out the set of books if you're interested. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, Live long and happy drama watching.